I don't like who I've become. This statement may fit with what you feel about yourself when you look at your life, at your past, you started with many aspirations, expectations for your future. At this point in your life, you would like to be on another level, in another way. Maybe with your family already formed, your financial life established, with peace within you, and Contrary to all this, what you have today, not only outside, but also inside, is very far, very far from what you expected. You have not been able to form the family you would like, your family is far from that, if you have a family, you have been living day after day working to survive, depending possibly on daily miracles to eat your daily bread, you have no peace within, and what hurts you the most is that when you look inside yourself, when you look in the mirror, you ask yourself, who have I become? Who is that person? You don't recognize yourself, you don't like what you see. That's it. It's like someone who took a wrong turn on the road and only realized later that they were far away. I know a person who set up the GPS to go on a trip as soon as those GPS devices to put in your car came out with not much experience, and they placed the name of the city. But it was a city with the same name in another state. There was the city in her state, but also there was another city with the same name in another state. They set up the GPS, going to the city, believing that they were going in the right direction, and they followed the GPS. When they noticed, they were in another state. They ended up in another state. They had to go back hundreds of miles. They relied on the GPS. The way seems odd, but I will rely on the GPS. Likewise, so many people live their lives trusting in their inner GPS, which is broken and flawed, called heart. They follow the heart, the GPS that the world advises to use. Follow your heart. Have you heard that before? Have you ever listened to this in any song, at the mouth of any artist, celebrity, a character of a movie or a series, follow your heart. Follow what you feel, what your heart tells you. So the person followed the misleading GPS and got where they didn't want to. And they think, how will I come back? Am I already so far from where I should be? Maybe I will stay right here. There's no turning back. You will demand too much work. Likewise, there's many who have become what they don't like, what they despise. And you see many people out there who look down their noses at others, puffs up their chest and say, I'm just like that, I don't regret anything. And even though everybody sees how they disgraced their lives, everybody sees it, everybody say it, but they don't change their minds. Pride is greater. Pride speaks louder. They are lost, but they don't want to stop to ask for information. Am I right? 
It's like that lost husband who is driving. The woman starts telling him, Honey, I think we are lost. And he does not want to change his mind. He says, I know where I am. Just for being ashamed and putting down the window and asking, how do I come out of this place? He's ashamed on recognizing in front of his wife that he got lost. And then he insists in the wrong path. It's easier to say, it's true, honey. Isn't it easier? But pride doesn't allow him. Many people are so far from what they would like to be. But pride doesn't let them change direction. To recalculate their route and to go back to where they started. But pride won't let them. So, unfortunately, they will have to get used with this person who they despise, they hate, and it's from that to worse. But there's another way. When we think of people in the Bible who traced this path, who became people who they despised, we soon remember King David. He was not the only one, but King David was a man according to God's own heart in his youth. He killed the giant Goliath. He was anointed as king. He was going well, a warrior. He was an admirable person until suddenly he succumbed to his heart's desire to the DPS called his heart and contemplating his soldier's wife from the balcony of his palace, he did not resist. He did not resist the temptation. And he added the temptation to his royal power, the power of a king, and he ordered the woman to be called to his room and consumed his sin. And Psalm 32 says, it talks about what happened to him while he remained this person who he despised. Psalm 32 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. So he remembered the time when he had peace and also the forgiveness he received after he sinned. And he went on saying, When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. In other words, he felt older than he was. He felt sick, literally sick. He felt pain. He couldn't come out of bed in certain days because he hated himself. His guilt, his sense of guilt. What have I done with my life? Who did I become? Who is this person? I don't recognize myself. That burdened his soul so much that he should have aged in his soul like 50 years. He felt like an old man. And he said, For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer like those who are bitter, with a long face, all that you tell them, it is a reason for a fight. They are angry, not at you, but at themselves, because of what they carry within them. But then he speaks of the solution. I acknowledged 
My sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Then, David resolved that matter, confessing it to God, finally taking off his ornaments, his mask, because as long as he kept that, he hid behind the scene, he tried to plot Uriah's death, Bathsheba's husband. He was fallen, but he kept Standing firm, as long as he kept that stance, he only aged his bones. But when he confessed it to God, he then received forgiveness and had peace. Make no mistake, he faced the consequences of his flaws, but at least he had peace. Because one thing is for you to face the consequences of your mistakes with no peace. Another thing is for you to face them with peace. And David found that peace. Later you read the rest of the psalm, but I'll just conclude with verse 9. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with beat and bridle, else they will not come near you. In other words, they call them a fool. He called himself a fool, because he was a fool for a while. Then he's saying, out of his own experience, don't be a fool. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Who knows your pains, you feel this contempt because you have not yet repented or made peace with God, with other people, and especially with yourself. Who knows what you carry within you, physical and emotional pains may not be because of this. So follow the recipe, the remedy from Psalm 32. God will forgive you, wash you and allow you to rebuild your life. Yes, God allows new beginnings. Take this opportunity. Don't stay proud, you know? In bad terms, with the world and yourself, make peace with God, make peace with you and with people, and peace will reach your heart. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.